Hey y'all and welcome to the first episode. Our book today is Jane Eyre. I was an English major and this is possibly the only book I ever enjoyed getting assigned. And I got assigned reading this book my last semester of college. Anyway, so this is possibly the most famous book by um, Charlotte Bronte, tied with the most famous book written by any Bronte with her sisters, Wuthering Heights. For now, let's get into the plot. So Jane grows up in an abusive household with her Aunt Reed and her Aunt Reed's three children. Her Uncle Reed is the one who is kind to her, but he died. And when Jane is about 10, Jane gets sent off to Lowood School, where she meets uh, Helen Burns and a whole lot more abuse. Um, Helen Burns is actually quite nice, but uh, then she dies too. Eventually Jane finishes her education at age 16 and becomes a teacher for two years. But when she's 18 she puts out an ad as like governess and someone takes up her offer. So she moves to uh, Thornfield Hall where she is a tutor for a young girl named Adele. Adele is the child of the master of the house. His name's Mr. Edward Rochester, and he's kind of been the prototype of the tall, dark, and handsome love interest. He's also been the prototype for the problematic love interest with a problematic past, but we'll get to that later. He's a little bit problematic because he is in his late 30s, almost 40, and he develops feelings for Jane who is 18 years old. I mean, she develops feelings for him too, and neither of them develop immediately, but the way Rochester goes about expressing those feelings is a little bit odd. At the time, he is courting a woman named Blanche Ingram, who is a better fit for him in social class and standing and all that kind of thing. And instead of expressing feelings to Blanche and Jane individually, as himself, uh, Mr. Rochester instead dresses up like this gypsy fortune teller and tries to read people's fortunes and tries to gauge their reactions that way. It's like Rochester, if Rochester was a middle school boy, Do you like me? Check yes, no, maybe. Uh, Jane gets word that her Aunt Reed is dying and he goes to see Aunt Reed. And so Aunt Reed basically says on her deathbed, I have important news for you, but I don't want to tell you in case I survive this illness, which I probably will, and then I could just lord it all over you for the rest of my life and of your life, because you were an unfortunate child. Uh, she dies and then Jane doesn't get to find out immediately. Jane uh, spends about a month away from Thornfield and then she goes back and she finds that Rochester is waiting for her. Rochester has broken up with Blanche. The following is a summary. Hi, I really missed your face. Do you want to get married? You're joking, right? No, really. Blanche Ingram is not my type and I really like you. So will you marry me? I mean... Okay, so they make it to the altar and uh, turns out this douche canoe is already married. <laughs> His wife's name is Bertha Mason and uh, she has been kept in the attic for however many years and <laughs> suddenly everything falls into place because there have been a lot of creepy things going on. So Rochester's internal monologue seems to be I don't want to be saddled with the public shame of people knowing that I got forced into a marriage with a crazy woman that I don't actually like. So instead of paying someone to keep her in the men mental institution, I'm going to pay someone to stay upstairs in my attic with my wife 24-7 and never legally be able to get divorced. And instead, risk potential arson and her biting my house guests and potential arson and 
ripping my girlfriend's veil the night before her wedding. So Jane takes the evening and eventually says, So Jane leaves. She's taken in by the River's siblings, uh, Diana, Mary, and Sinjin, who's conventionally attractive, but kind of an actual asshole. But Jane gets a teaching job. Soon she finds out what uh, Aunt Reed did not want to tell her. A uh, different uncle had died and had left Jane his inheritance. And furthermore, uh, the Rivers are her cousins and Jane decides that she does not need 20,000 pounds, so she splits it four ways among her and her three cousins. Soon thereafter, Jane and Sinjin have a discussion that goes a little something like this. Will you marry me and go to India with me as a missionary? I can't possibly take a 19 year old woman with me in any other context. No, didn't you like someone else? She's not suited to be a missionary's wife. It's because there's someone else, isn't there? No, it's not because there's someone else. So Jane returns to Thornfield where she finds out that Bertha has torched the entire building and committed suicide and injured Rochester in the process as well. He's lost most of his vision as well as his right hand. But uh, Jane has money now and a uh, willingness to take care of them both and so they get married and live happily ever after at the end. Hooray! So this book reads a lot like a fairy tale. There's a downtrodden young woman who gets raised in an abusive and problematic household and then goes into a dark and mysterious castle ruled by a dark and mysterious uh, master with a lot of problematic secrets and problematic history and uh, possibly witches curses in the past and then eventually they warm up to each other and then fall in love and get married and live happily ever after. However, there is a lot of fairy tale language that goes on during the narrative. Rochester often calls Jane an elf or a fairy or something like that. A lot of times because there's something that he wants to hide. They also have a very sort of fairy tale like meeting. She's walking alone in the woods and then he comes galloping up and he has a really large dog and this dog looks like this mythical creature that's come out of the abyss to come and attack her. But he turns out to be fine, the dog turns out to be fine. Jane comes back from town and finds out that this random person on the trail was actually the head of the house. Mistaken, unknown, mysterious identity there. What's also important to note, if we're looking at feminist theory, is that Bertha's happy ending has to not happen in order for Jane and Rochester to have a happy ending in their sort of fairy tale. And furthermore, it would seem that Rochester seems to think that in this sort of fairy tale narrative arc, Bertha is the evil witch. Concealing the mad woman's neighborhood from you, however, was something like covering a child with a cloak and laying it down near Upas tree. That demon's vicinage is poisoned and always was. When my wife is prompted by her familiar to burn people in their beds at nights, to stab them, to bite their flesh from bones, and so on. But it has been argued that Bertha and Jane are two sides of a very similar coin. Bertha is wild, where Jane is calm. Bertha is passionate, but so is Jane, but Jane's passion manifests in a more socially acceptable way, except to her abusive aunt. So Bertha is often considered a manifestation of the wilder passions underneath Jane's calm veneer. That is why she seems to be acting out with the veil right before Jane is getting married and, and Rochester prompted by the familiar. A familiar is often associated with witchcraft. So Rochester really seems to believe that Bertha is committing some kind of witchcraft, that he is justified in condemning her and locking her up. There's no real word from Bertha's perspective, though in the 1960s, I believe uh, is when it came out, um, there's a novel called The Wild Sargasso Sea, but it's the backstory 
of Bertha Mason. But what's also very important is that unlike in many other fairy tales where the protagonists get married and the female protagonist is still mostly dependent on the male protagonist, that is not the case here. Uh, Jane does not get married to Rochester until she feels assured in her own identity and also assured in her own finances. She has a sense of self beyond her identity with Rochester, which she did not have before she leaves Thornfield. So if you liked this video, like and comment down below. Questions for you today are what did you like, what do you want to see next week, and what is your favorite kind of cheese? And I will see you in the next one.